Hey everybody, it's Sam McGuire, and today we're going to look at a very specific issue that happens with audio sometimes, mostly in part due to modern smartphones. The iPhone is terrible at this. So what happens is you'll be recording audio, and you'll have an iPhone near your equipment someplace, and it puts off this signal which sounds like this. And effectively ruins your audio. Now we're going to look at exactly what this is. We're going to talk about some of the issues that comes with it and then we'll talk about some situations where you may be able to do something about it. Up front I need to say that there's very little in most situations that you can do about this and that's why up front you should at every shoot you have make sure that everyone has their cell phones turned off especially the smartphone variety because once this is on here, as you'll see, there's very little you can do to get it off. So in Soundtrack Pro, which is where we're going to work, this has really the most surgical audio tools of the whole Final Cut suite and in a lot of ways of most of the different audio applications out there. You wouldn't mix a film in Soundtrack Pro very easily, but this type of editing it's very good at. And let me show you why. First of all, we have these two little boxes here. This is the waveform view, and this is the frequency spectrum view. So let's click into this. This is going to change how we look at our audio. This now still represents time left to right. So if we push play, it'll go left to right. Vertical equals frequency. Now in this view, we don't have a sense of any of the frequencies. We have a sense of the volume. So the, the louder it is, the larger these waveforms will be both in the positive and the negative, but we don't have any sense of frequency here or pitch. We go into here and we have that sense. Now in this case, instead of being vertical up and down for loudness, it's actually darkness in this particular scheme. Now we can also right click and show spectrum control. Some of those are controls are there as well. And this is actually a pretty important area because it allows us to fine tune how we look at this so that it makes sense to you and also you can adapt it for different needs. Say your audio is very soft, you can actually darken this up so that it looks the same as if it was loud while you're doing your editing. So we have some things here, minimum and maximum frequency. This allows us to really get into the low frequencies for instance. So 1K, that's 1000 Hertz. Most of everything that you're going to be dealing with is usually 4K and below. So if we have this all the way up to 20 or 24,000 there, you're going to see a lot of empty space here. We also have the ability to adjust for the loudness. So for instance, if it is soft, we can change this range to really darken things up, for instance. Or if it's quite loud, we can lighten it up a little bit. We can also change the analysis window type. These are all different formulas for figuring this out. You can try which one works best. The, the standard default is the one that I typically leave it on. But every once in a while, if I'm working on something particularly difficult, I'll try these other ones just to see the different uh, formulas for that. We also have window size. This talks about the window packet or the packet size for the data as it's being analyzed. So we can go on a very low number. And what happens is we have a lot of vertical accuracy. So timing accuracies of how this is displayed are higher or we have higher frequency accuracies. So this is more the, the vertical or the horizontal along this scale as we go up and down. We can also get this linearly. That means all the frequencies are split up exactly the same or logarithmic, which is gonna spread out the low frequencies, which is typically a good idea in some cases because it really spreads out this area that we hear and condenses all the stuff that are really outside of that range. So you can see we still have that space, but it's condensed into a little range. So this is still the exact same amount of data, just looked at a little differently. So most of the time, I'll just simply pull down this until about it hits the color, and sometimes even lower. But what we're gonna be doing right now is looking at the cell phone distortion. So we're gonna see that it goes all the way up to the top there. Now we can also change the color scheme. And some of these are going to be easier to see your data. Some of them are not. Grayscale is the one we were at the very beginning, just inverted. 
and then rainbow. This is the default, and we're going to leave it here for the moment. You really can see some good amount of data there. So let's push play. Okay, and I want to say about this clip, this was a clip provided on the forum. Let's switch over to the forum real quick. After I posted a video last week about audio noise reduction, I had a, a comment about this cell phone noise, which is what stemmed the creation of this video, and they actually provided a file. And so I took this file, and that's what we're using right now just to look at it, because it had some unique issues which are really going to make it almost impossible to remove this sound from. But I wanted to definitely point that out. So if you have continuing questions or other issues, that's a place where we started talking about it a little bit. So let's look at this first of all. I'm going to zoom in. And you're going to see this grid shape here. This grid shape is that noise. And the reason why it becomes so difficult to remove is because, as you can see, square, 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 square. It infiltrates the audio through the entire spectrum. It's there in the low frequencies, the mid frequencies, the high frequencies. So if we were to actually to remove this, we're going to be taking a lot of the other audio along with it. We have some cool tools in here. We have this tool, frequency selection tool, which actually would let us come in and delete these little things. Now you can see what happens. It leaves a hole there. So all the ambience is now gone. And a lot of the speech, which really ends up here around 5K and below 4K, sometimes a little higher, but most of those, that part of the speech isn't as important as the fundamental areas down here. But you can see that it's going to be very hard to pull this out. It covers thousands of frequencies there. And this one really at the bottom goes all the way down through the range. So I'm going to make a selection at this level. And let's switch this now into the logarithmic you can see that it's still it goes down right into that fundamental area so it's deeply embedded into the audio which makes it very hard to get rid of now in this case as we listen to this clip you'll notice something the dialogue that's taking place is already quite hard to hear buried in a noise floor. One of the primary rules we live by with noise reduction is that if the noise is equal to the actual signal you want to keep, that there's really nothing you could do. You have to have a very low noise to signal ratio so that the noise can be removed while leaving a good amount of the original signal intact. Anytime you do noise reduction, you're still pulling out some of the original desired signal and so the more embedded it is, the harder it is to remove without distorting that. So there's really not much we can do, partly because the mic placement to the speaker is at such a distance and there's so much noise already there. So in this case, it's like a double whammy with the cell phone noise distortion, which is actually louder than everything else there. So the fact that it's the loudest thing really makes it basically impossible to get rid of. So... That's going to be the key here. If you have a really strong, well-recorded, clean dialogue track that has that on it, then there's something else you can do. You can definitely use some tools. Now, the traditional noise reduction tools aren't really going to work. However, we can come in, make a selection here. We're going to go to the Process menu, Effects, EQ, Channel EQ. So we're going to push play. Once I push play, I'm going to start dragging some of these bands around. So I pull it up. You see it's quite wide. When I hover over the little node point, I can narrow it down and then continue pushing up. We're going to do some narrow spikes. I'm going to sweep through the frequencies until I hear that noise really pushed up. When I find that, I'm then going to pull it out. So that's one of the techniques. Now, it's not going to be as effective here because, like I said, we're going to be pulling out so much of the other sound. But this is how you would do it, or one of the things you could do if you have this distortion without having the poor audio quality that this example has.
you can hear it's starting to dull it a little bit, and I've only done two bands. Because you can see all of these bands going horizontally here across the entire range, you might need to actually use two or three different equalizers like this, all very narrow, to find a number of these different places here. And you could line them up. You could say, you know, 6,500, 8,000, and make those the center bands which we're not doing, we haven't gone quite that high here, but the hardest part is going to be down here when we get into these ranges, which is just below a thousand hertz. So we're down here at this one right now, and a little bit edging towards this one with these two bands. So you're going to need to kind of set up a whole filter set of pulling those down, but you could hear that it's really starting to take out the other stuff as well. So in this case, it's not going to work as effectively. One of the other things that was talked about was using limiters and compressors. And you can mess around with those, but it'll be less effective than actually using the equalizer here. One of the things that you can do is that if you have this distortion inside of a well-recorded signal, something where the dialogue is quite loud and then the cell phone noise is a lot softer, you could use those a little bit more effectively, including you could also use, for instance, a noise gate which you can actually use a little bit to, in this case, is going to be a little tricky to demonstrate this without the right thing, but you'll set it so that the reduction is anywhere down in this range. You'll set the threshold so that it'll start removing that signal when the voice goes below the threshold, and then it'll just, what happens is, when the signal gets soft enough, it'll actually start turning it down even further, and if that cell noise is in between phrases or in between words, it'll start to reduce it even more at that point. So you get a little bit additional reduction in between words and phrases. Although, at this point, you might as well come in here and manually edit it. Typically, if this is so important that you can't get the audio anyplace else, then you might want to send it to someone who can then manually go through and edit out those pieces, kind of like doing some basic frame-by-frame -frame special effects or removing of things in Photoshop, etc. So very tedious work, but possible. Okay, that's it for this. The main point is turn off all those cell phones before you're recording. Make sure everybody has them off. That'll save you so much headache later. Okay, good luck.